Uh, so welcome back. This one's just a practice problem. There's no like lecture here. The idea is that you actually try it first. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to try it first, right? Um, so this is just a problem from an exam. I uh, grabbed it from some old exam. A really good example. Um, and so, I mean, what, it, what it's having you do um, is it's giving you some words here, and then there's a diagram on the next page. Um, so, I mean, just to kind of read it with you. So we're making an H-bridge circuit, so it's a review of what we've recently done. Um, it's controlling a motor in two directions. Um, the pick, we're using RB0 and RB1, which arbitrarily pick two things. In addition to the pick, we also want a basic switch circuit to serve as an emergency stop. Um, so we learned about basic switch circuits in class. It wasn't a video lecture, it was in class. Um, and that's going to go to the enable line. Um, so when the when the button is pressed, it cuts off the enable line. So it's not going to the pick, it's going straight to the H bridge. Um, make the connections on the on the one shown. Um, go ahead and connect the pick, uh, connect the basic switch, uh, connect the enable line to the basic switch. Um, make sure you use real resistors for any resistors you have and make sure you label them. Um, include de inductive kick protection, uh, which means snubbers and uh, decoupling capacitors. Uh, so that's the problem. Uh, see if you can work it on this uh, on this paper. Okay, I'm going to work it as well. Um, so if I kind of come through here, uh, it's going to get messy. Um, I'll start with the uh, the pick connections. Uh, let's see here. I think it's 11 and 12 uh, that are connected to power and ground over here. And then, I mean, you can look at yours. I'm, I'm just working the problem, right? And then it's uh, 31 and 32, I believe, uh, on this side. Um, and well, I guess I should use the, uh, the regulator there. Um, in addition to connecting it, you also need a decoupling capacitor. Um, so this is like a 0.1 uh, microfarad um, or a 0.01, I don't care, right? Um, so that would uh, connect the pick chip. Oh, there's also, you learned about this, or, or will learn about this more later. Uh, Master Clear also needs this 1K. Um, don't forget about that. Like, later in the class, it will really come to bite you. But you need to hold up Master Clear uh, so that this thing runs normally. Just to kind of share, when it's low, that means you can reprogram the pick. Uh, when it's high, it means it's running. Um, so if you want it to be running, uh, you, you need to connect that 1K. Turns out that if you connect nothing there, it'll float. Sometimes you get lucky and floating will be high, but then you go to a new room and floating will be low. Moral of the story, always connect it. Uh, next, we've got to um, connect the basic switch circuit. Um, I forgot what pin we said it was on. Um, I'm sure we said... Oh, never mind. The basic switch circuit's going straight to the H-bridge. Um, so basic switch circuit, just so you can remember... Um, it's kind of got, its legs are connected internally, so these front two legs are the same leg. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, I'll ground these guys. So if I ground, if I ground this one, I also ground the one on the other side, right, because they're connected. And uh, then to make the basic switch circuit, what I'm going to need to do is, ooh, I'll use my voltage source there. Um, and I meant to, of course, put a 1K, <laughs> I told you would get ugly. Um, Put a 1K pull-up resistor. Um, without the resistor, when you press the button, it would short and then be really bad. Um, and then your signal line is going to actually connect uh, from that. So the top side of the, the switch, I typically have go a resistor to 5 volts, and then also your signal to wherever your signal goes. Um, and then on the low side, you just ground it. So the nice thing about this is whenever it's not pressed, it'll just be on. Um, H-bridge will be enabled. It will be good. Uh, but when you press it, emergency stop. Everybody shuts down. Uh, connecting to the rest of this guy, uh, I'll just kind of start with the uh, the simple ones. So these interiors just get grounded. All right, so see if I can draw ground symbols. Um, the other two, so pin 16 is going to go uh, to the 5 volts regulated. And then the thing that actually drives your motor is going to use the 5 volts unregulated. <laughs> it's going to get so ugly. Um, connecting some more things, pin 3 and pin 6 uh, are going to go to your motor. 
Uh, while we're drawing them, we may as well draw their uh, snubber diodes. Snubber diodes go uh, up to the thing that drives the motor, which is the unregulated five. Uh, and then there's also one that goes down uh, to ground. Oh, I've got a ground right there for that one. And down to ground over here. Let's kind of draw a ground on there. Uh, so those are our four uh, snubber diodes. Before I forget, I better put the other decoupling capacitor on. So this decoupling capacitor is a, typically a big one. We'll use, say, a 330 microfarad up there. Um, so now I've got both my decoupling capacitors. I've got like my little one, my point one. Looks like a musical note, but it's a point one. Um, and then I've got my big one, my 330. Um, so we're in good shape. Uh, the only thing we need to add is control lines. Uh, I think I said RB0 uh, zero and RB1. Um, so I think that's almost it. Oh, one more thing. Uh, last but certainly not least, we need to ground the other side. So we need to ground the enable line on the other side. Um, so, I mean, obviously when we're grading these problems, we're just kind of going through checking it off in pieces. Uh, the first thing we're going to say is, you know, is their microcontroller connected? That's going to be so many points. You know, so many points for this one, for that one, for that one. Uh, next, we're going to look at, is your basic switch connected right? Um, those are usually all or nothing. You either got it right or you got it wrong because we do basic switches so much. Um, and then there'll be so many points for the H-bridge circuit. Did you get the right things to the right places? Um, after that, there's always points for, did you include your snubber diodes? Um, and there's points for, did you include your decoupling capacitors? Uh, so that's the example problem. That's the extent of this video lecture. I just wanted to give you one thing that kind of brought together all the pieces uh, from the last two video lectures and what you've learned in class. That's it.